Joe Biden and Kamala Harris took office, they promised to build back better. The fawning media told us that the adults are back in the room. But three and a half years later, the economy is suffering, the border is broken, and crises continue to erupt worldwide. Yes, and that was House Oversight Committee hearing yesterday on the Biden-Harris administration's worst policy failures. Chairman James Comer releasing an 18-page memorandum slamming the administration's, quote, inability to govern coherently and deliver for the American people as it is pulled along by crisis after crisis. Joining me now is the man himself, Kentucky Congressman and Chairman of the House Oversight Committee, James Comer. Congressman, it's good to see you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks very much for being here today. What was the motivation to do this hearing, walk us through all of these failures? I guess you're not hearing it from Kamala Harris. She's not addressing any of these policy issues. Absolutely not. You know, this, our committee is about waste, fraud, abuse, and mismanagement in the federal government. So, uh, in a Biden Harris administration, business is good. I mean, you look at all the policies over the past three and a half years, the amount of money that they've spent. And uh, it's hard to find one single policy success. Uh, we examined in the hearing yesterday specific policies uh, where they tried to connect people with broadband in rural areas. The administration spent $46 billion, Maria, and not a single household has gotten connected into this one particular uh, broadband internet expansion program. We looked at the debacle in Afghanistan and, and analyzed how much money, uh, how many billions of dollars worth of equipment was left behind for the Taliban. We looked at the southern border and uh, we still can't get a, a summary of how much has been spent transporting these illegals, providing free health care for these illegals and food and shelter. So the list goes on and on, Maria, of all the money that this administration has wasted. And at the end of the day, the American consumers are much worse off because of inflation as a result of the excessive spending of this administration. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to identify which policy is actually the most impactful on American citizens in a negative way. I mean, is it the wide open border where 10 million illegals have come in on Kamala Harris's watch and 2 million gotaways bringing us, you know, people like the Venezuelan gang, Tren de Aragua, who is mugging everybody and, and, and murdering people? Uh, or is it the, the failure in the energy space uh, where they have locked up the oil and gas industry to the extent that now we have to get oil from adversaries across the world? Or is it the $7 trillion in spending that brought us 40-year highs inflation? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think inflation and the border are at the top. You, you look at uh, the border, and even Jerome Powell, in uh, answering questions as to why he reduced interest rates uh, half a basis point, uh, was because uh, he said the job market's at risk because of the influx of so many illegals. So we're already seeing uh, an, econ uh, an, an effect on the economy in addition to the hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars that we've had to spend on these illegals, transporting them, giving them free health care, the increased uh, cost to, to law enforcement, the bogged down court system. I mean, the list goes on and on. The, uh, the mandates on public education in our schools in America, uh, this border situation has, has been detrimental to our economy, not, right. not to mention our, our national security. And I'm still asking myself why. I mean, look, of course we want a diverse wor workforce. Of course we want immigration. But we want legal immigration. We, we don't mm -hmm. want people coming unvetted where we don't know what their motivations are. We don't know what their intentions yeah. are. Two million got away. So I, I scratch my head. Why? Why, being the steward of the greatest economy, the greatest country in the world, the freest in the world, why would you have your borders wide open? I don't get it. I think they're doing it for a political opportunity. I think that uh, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and the Democrat National Committee see a political opportunity with bringing in this many new potential Democrat voters. I really believe that's what it's all about. I believe that's why they're uh, up in arms over having to vote for the SAFE Act, which would make it illegal to vote if you're not a U.S. citizen. Uh, if it wasn't about that, I don't think they would care whether that language is on this continuing resolution or not. It's all I'm about waiting. politics. It's all about a political opportunity for the Democrat Party. Once again, it's all about holding on to that grip on power. 
and yep. not about the American people. And now to China, Chairman. You say the FBI is withholding information on Harris's running mate, Tim Waltz, specifically on his longstanding ties to communist China and whether he interacted with affiliates of the Chinese Communist Party. We know that Waltz lived and taught high school in China, visited more than 30 mm -hmm. times, even honeymoon there on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. He reportedly once described communism as a system where everyone shares and everyone is equal and it's good. Congressman, in your letter to the FBI director, Chris Wray, you also point out that Waltz appointed a man with alleged CCP ties to a Minnesota state board. Tell us more about this. What are you expecting from Tim Waltz when it comes to communist China? Well, based on uh, the number of times that Tim Waltz has been to China, based on uh, the fact that China has a pretty big footprint in his state, uh, we find it hard to believe that the FBI doesn't have some type of file on Tim Waltz. He's been going too many times or over too many years, dating back to when he was uh, in, the, in the National Guard. Uh, none of this makes sense, and this is the type of person that the FBI would, would have a file on. You know, when we looked at the, the situation with China, Maria, you know as well as anyone, China comes in and they try to look for weaknesses in our American political system, people that they can compromise. Uh, we looked at the Biden family. Uh, they compromised the Biden family through money, through millions of dollars, through the president's son, Hunter Biden. Now with Tim Waltz, it doesn't appear that any money transacted. It appears that Tim Waltz just simply likes China. He likes the way they operate. He likes the way they do business. And he thinks that the business model in China uh, that's helped reduce poverty could be uh, a great business model in the United States. That should be more concerning to the American people than China buying influence with the, with the political family. It's very... Uh, it's very questionable what Tim Waltz's ties with China are, and we want to know what the FBI has on him. Well, that is, that is just scary. Uh, Tim Waltz's wife is also talking about turning the page. I'm trying to understand what page she's talking about turning because Kamala Harris has been in charge for the last four That's years. Right. So what page are we turning? Here's Tim Waltz's wife. Watch this. What Kamala Harris told us we had to do was we had to turn the page, right? But I kind of liked it when she did this. Turn the page. You like that? Okay, so I need you to be with me and practice with me. What are we going to do? We're going to turn the page. Oh, pretty good. Do it again. We're going to turn the page. And know what else that looks like? Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, Donald Trump. Congressman, the turn of the page from what? Kamala's been in charge. Donald Trump is not running the country and has been out of office since 2020. Yeah, that's a scary family there. I mean, it, you know, the it looks like the type of family that's been indoctrinated and they, they, they believe that uh, there's a better way to do business. And, you know, with... Some of the things that the Waltzes have said about China, uh, their affection for China, uh, that's very concerning to me because uh, we don't want to set our business model like China's. I mean, China's already got too big of a foothold here in the United States, stealing our intellectual property, manipulating our currency so that they can have a trade advantage. Uh, they don't abide by any labor or environmental laws over there to, to give them a further competitive advantage. And if we have someone in the White House that likes the way they do business and wants to continue to bow down to China and give China a further competitive advantage against American workers and American industries, then that's something that everybody on Wall Street and every consumer should be uh, worried about. Mr. Chairman, it's good to uh, catch up. We so appreciate your time. I'm waiting for a subpoena of Alejandro Mayorkas, given he's overseeing all of this. Are you planning on subpoenaing Alejandro Mayorkas? We've been battling Mayorkas this whole, uh, this whole Congress. We impeached him, and you know the Senate uh, didn't even take it up. So uh, we're trying to figure out what we can do to Mayorkas. But it's been, a, it's been a losing battle thus far, Maria, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, he's overseeing the border, and he's also overseeing the Secret Service with all those failures in protecting Donald Trump. Uh, we'll keep a spotlight on it. Thank you, James Comer. We'll be right back.